Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. I could have in my hands the perfect emergency communications portable antenna which is also suitable for hams. What is it? Well, it's a Shakespeare Galaxy inflatable antenna. I've been sent this as a loan and so I'll show you what's in the bag. What I plan to do after that is take it on the hill and um, give it a try in a portable situation on, on two metres FM and see how it does. And then when we come back, we'll probably do an A to B comparison with the old Slim G, Slim Jim type antenna because I think that's what a lot of people use for, you know, a, a really portable sort of two metre FM setup. So I won't do A to B on the hill with these two, but when we get back, A to B with those. So inside the bag, it's a nice little high-vis Velcro pouch so you can't get it lost. We have got this so heavy fabric um a load of rg174 with a pl259 on the end i think there's about five and a half meters there and then we've got this antenna inside this inflatable tube it's actually got a matching unit in it i can feel it there um so it does 70 sems as well i'm just going to concentrate on two meters today when we get down to the bottom a couple of bits of velcro which have been built into it, they're, they're attached. I should say that at the very top of the antenna there's a pouch for tucking it into a mast um, and there's also some eyelets here. I think I might actually just attach a little bit of um, cord onto these eyelets to give me a bit more flexibility with uh, with hoisting it. So at the business end of the antenna we've got this um, red tube here which is used to inflate the antenna and this reminds me of the life vests that you get when you're on an aircraft and you can blow into this to inflate it and the cap when it's reversed pushes into the valve to release the air however the party trick of this antenna is that we can take a 16 gram co2 cylinder and simply screw it in to the antenna we can put this back in the bag keep it until we need it and when we want to inflate this, yank this cord and this thing will go up in about a second and it'll be absolutely solid. So solid that it doesn't actually need a mast to support it except at the very bottom. So that's what we're going to try when I get it out portable. We'll see how practical it is to use in an outdoor situation. So watch on for that and then we'll come back some some sort of bench testing and a bit of a summary. I'm here. That was a 10 minute drive from the house, so this is my simplest and quickest SOTUS summit to get up. Simplest high ground really. It's about a 20 to 30 minute walk from here up a decent track. Right, let's go. Whilst it's still frozen underfoot here, there is no frost and uh, I'm glad I wore my waterproof trousers though because the heather's pretty soaking wet. Slightly overheating. Seem to be getting somewhere. Here we are then. Craig Lake is the ideal radio testing summit. It's got a trick point. It's got a nice post for putting your antenna on. We've got a tree, alternative antenna support. We've got a nice big shelter cairn there. I've actually rested a tarp against that in the past. And oh, we've got some views. Okay, now for the money shot. Get this near this bag. That'll be a tangled mess. Let's sort that out in a minute. Right, we have our gas cylinder and we have our antenna up. How is that? And it's absolutely rigid. I think you could actually run this as a horizontally polarised antenna if you wanted as well. 
So there we go. Right, I'm going to go and stick it on the mast and we'll get it on the air. Now this thing's so solid, it's actually happy just to sit on this fence post, just with a nail supporting it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right up the mast for you so we can get a bit of a better appreciation of what it can do. It's not curved, it's just the um, uh, the distortion with this lens I'm using. I'm going to do some testing when we get home with this, but two things straight off I know. Part of the attraction of this antenna is it's a very broad band. Um, and one of the downfalls, I would say, is the length and the type of coax. There's probably five and a half metres here of RG174, which is going to be quite lossy at two metres and even lossy at 70 cms. However, we'll get some numbers later on. In the meantime, hooked it up to the old Yesu VX7R and uh, I'm going to put a SOTA spot on and see if we can get some contacts on two meters. CQ SOTA, Mike, Mike Zero, Echo, Foxtrot, India, Portable, QRZ. GM4JXP. Lima, X-Ray. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll take Alex first because he sounds a bit weaker and he's probably got less time. Uh, GM4A5ALX, uh, go ahead. GM5ALX, good afternoon, Fraser. Uh, you're five and eight with me, although it sort of drops a little bit every now and again, over. Uh, GM5ALX, MM0EF5, Portable, thanks for five and eight, Alex. And uh, you're five and three, 53, up to Craigley. Golf my Echo Sierra 068, over. GM0NRT. Okay. Uh, NRT, uh, stand by, GM4JXP, MM0, yeah, 5 portable. Yeah, 5, 9 uh, plus, both ways, Simon. And um, yeah, I suspect we're just about lying the site down to a boy and you're only a couple of um, miles away. But uh, you know, I'm actually glad I came up here today. I wasn't feeling too great this morning, but uh, the surrounding mountains are looking absolutely stunning this afternoon, over. Well, I'm glad, uh, glad it's worked out for you and hope the uh the, uh, the teeth aren't hurting too much. Too big. Uh, Cheers, Simon. Bye-bye. QRZ. There's definitely someone else there. QRZ. Mike, Mike Zero, Echo, Foxtrot, India Portable. Uh, Golf Mike Zero, November Radio, Tango. Uh, GM Zero, NRT, MM Zero, EFI, Portable. Good afternoon, Bill. Uh, great to hear you. Thanks for calling in. Uh, it's a lovely afternoon up here on Craig Lake, and uh, you're, you're 5 and 8, 58 over. Okay, thanks for the 5 and 8, uh, Fraser. I'm struggling a wee bit with yourself. You're about 5 and 1, crackly, crackly 5 and 1 there, Fraser. But, but nice to hear you there. Uh, back to you, Fraser, from GM0 NRT. Right, that's this little thing packed up. Let's get back to the laboratory and do some testing. Right, I am back. You can see it's dark outside now. I should say before we get into this, I've not been feeling well the last few days. Um, I had a dental procedure and I've got a quite bad toothache. I wasn't even going out today, but oh my God, I'm so glad I did. It was just the weather got better as I was, I was descending and, and some of the views and um, the scenery I saw on the way down, the visibility was superb. I could see Cairngorm Summit, which is about 40 miles away from here. So brilliant. Anyway, I've got some data here. I did some measuring, set it up in the garden this morning. And um, before I go into that, though, I do need to say that the, the company Shakespeare that make these, they do three different versions. They do an air band, they do a ham band, so two metres and 70 sims, and they do a marine band. Now, um, this actually says VHF marine on it, so I suspect this is the marine one. As an amateur, would I choose the Slim G, Slim Jim, or this, or for an emergency communications antenna, would I choose this or this? The answer should be fairly transparent by the time I've run through some of the stats, okay? So first of all, weight. Slim G, 240 grams. This, excluding the bag, 380, and then 60 grams for a gas cartridge. So you're well over um, 400 grams with this one. Um, coax type, this has got RG58. This has got RG174. Probably doesn't make a difference to HF, but VHF, you'll find out in a moment, there's a massive difference using the, the really skinny coax. 
Now the Slim G you can order with a PL259 or a um, BNC. I've got one of each, this is my BNC one. This comes with a PL259, which isn't the best at two meters and is really pretty poor on 70 cents. The Slim G comes with four meters of coax, which I've always found is plenty. This thing comes with six to six and a half meters of coax. Um, so probably more than you need, and considering it's quite lossy, definitely more than you need. I was able to wander around with the, um, the radio this afternoon when I was using it. So the loss then, at 145 megahertz, your four meters of RG58 is going to lose you about 0 0.6 decibels, okay? This one, believe it or not, you're going to lose two and a half dBs. You're actually going to lose about half your power. If you were using a five watt radio, half your power is getting lost um, in this in this feeder, which isn't good. Um, the length of the antenna, there's not too much difference. The actual antenna on its own is 1.4 meters. Um, and this antenna on its own is about 1.25 meters. Um, that means that this is a this is a five eighths wave antenna, I think. I've not taken it apart, and this is a three quarters wave antenna according to the stats. Now coming on to SWR. So what's the usable frequency? So I tested it on my um, good old um, MFJ259 um, earlier today. I haven't produced any plots or anything like that. What I did, I, I measured the lowest frequency at two point. Um, one, and I measured the highest frequency at, at um, 2 to 1 SWR for both antennas. So in theory everything between is usable because the SWR is less than 2 to 1. Now this is the surprising result. So this is definitely a, a 2 meter antenna designed for the ham band, okay? So this will work from 141 to 148 megahertz two to one at each of these points, and the lowest was about 1.4 in the middle. This, however, is really wide banded. This has got less than 2.1 SWR from 143 megahertz right up to 162 megahertz. The lowest F SWR on this is around about 151, if I recall. In the ham bands, it's about 1.6, 1.7. So this is usable as it stands on two meters VHF right through to the marine frequencies and upwards into almost the uh, uh, commercial high band VHF frequencies. Now, obviously, if you want to use it on marine band, you do need a license for that in the UK, at least. And then the cost as well. The, this is incredibly, incredibly good value for money. This Spectrum Communications Slim G only costs about 20 quid plus postage, so 20 pounds for that. I'm actually going to do a separate video on how this works and how it's made. And um, this is 83 pounds plus VAT, so you add another 20% onto that, which is about another 16 pounds, and um, suddenly you're looking at about 100 pounds for the, for the inflatable antenna. I can understand why, because there's a lot more goes into making this. Believe me, it's really robust. It looks really fit for purpose and, and really heavy duty. So, what's the summary then? Well, I think this is an ideal emergency communications antenna. Um, if you were on a boat, um, you could keep this in a life raft. Um, if you were involved in search and rescue, uh, mountain rescue, um, the mountain rescue helicopters in the UK use um, marine band to communicate with the mountain rescue teams on the ground. This this will do you in an emergency. Yeah, it will work on, on the, the hand bands on two metres, but it's not the most efficient at those frequencies. So I put this firmly in the sort of prepper, keep it in your um, go bag. You know, if you were in a vehicle that um, you don't normally have a radio in. If you've got this in your handheld, you can use it in an emergency. To be honest with you, you don't even need a mast. If you inflate it with a gas bottle, you could strap it to anything. You could even hold the bottom of it in your hand because it's got so much pressure in it that um, it re will remain upright. If you inflate it um, just using your mouth, you would definitely need to support it top and bottom using a mast. You, you don't get the same amount of air pressure in it. So for uh, amateur radio use, I would stick with this, the Slim G or equivalent, people make them themselves. 
I've always struggled to try and make one of these because the velocity factors of um, of this ladder line is really difficult to measure properly and if you get it slightly wrong using one of the online calculators you end up about 10 megahertz out on your um, on your resonance so um, that's why I, I prefer just to buy the, the, the Slim G from Spectrum Communications so there you go that's it I hope you found that useful what do you think? would you buy one of these? let me know in the comments 73